what's going on everybody i am mike living with 3m auto vlogging here and today i've got an unexpected repair video to drop on you guys um wound up coming home from work the other day and the check coolant light came on hmm added some coolant it was low came back the next day low coolant light came on two times it's not good so we had to do some investigating found out that it is a part that regularly goes bad on these cars on the c-class so if you have a leak and they try to tell you to take it to mercedes uh 800 bucks is what this repair they would have charged nah uh, -uh. so they're gonna try and tell you well it's possibly the turbo or it's possibly a head gasket no, it's neither one of those usually. I mean, I'm not saying guaranteeing it's not, but in most cases, it's a problem with a busted tube. And I've got part numbers in the video. Let's get this video rolling, guys. All right, so we're gonna pop the hood and we're gonna look at it. And looking at it like this, you will notice your um, power steering's right here. You, you just get an overall view. Brakes are over here. And in this jug right here, that's our coolant. And that's our uh, reservoir right here. And that's where we will add and you check your levels. Okay, so you're gonna need a special coolant because it's already low. And when you take these hoses and tubes apart, you're gonna lose a little bit of coolant. So you, you cannot put regular water or uh, tap water in this. I recommend looking up in your owner's manual. I've got a video about how to add coolant. So be sure to check this video out right here. Okay, so you, you don't have to take off your oil filler cap or anything to remove this. You just pull up on the center piece and it's just got some push pins that hold it down on top so I set it over here out of the way so you can you can see everything under here and this right here is going to be the culprit and the reason I know is let me get on this side and show you guys I'll bring the camera over here let's get it down closer okay this is your reservoir right here. All right, this tube goes over to this bottom tube. And this is like a twin tube. I say twin because there's two plastic tubes that go right here and connect. And I was looking for the leak. Well, this metal pan right here, I'm not sure if you can see it. See the metal pan? This is just a, a heat shield or something, but it was full of coolant. So the coolant was puddling up right here. So anytime you've got puddling, you've got to look above that because it's not going to be below it. It's usually dripping down on it. So like I said, this tube and this tube, there, there's two tubes. I know it's hard to see from the camera angle, but they are connected. They are a twin tube. And the culprit is right here. If you crank the car up and let it run for 10 minutes, you're gonna see there's a crack right here and it's gonna start dripping. See that crack? We'll open our part and I will put links down in the description, so please check that out to order your part today. Do not take this into Mercedes and pay several hundred dollars for 
this repair. Okay, so taking it out of the box, it is a twin tube design, but the tubes are not interconnected. It's just connected at a mounting point right there. So it's two separate tubes connected with one mounting point. All right, so I just, we hold this up just like this. It's, it's going just like this and everything matches up perfectly. All right, so I'm getting ready to disassemble the system just for safety. First off, you want it cool. You never want to work on a hot engine because this is under pressure. You want to take this off and just set it over here out of the way so there is no pressure and no heat on the system. Okay, so removal of the old parts, we're going to need needle nose for these little clips right here on these lines, like little cotter pins. Um, so, and we're gonna need a T25 to remove the bolts from the back tubes. And that T25 is T25 Torx, so the star. Work it back and forth, it will pop out. There you go. All right, I wanna give you a close up of how that goes in there and pops out. This thing pushes in and out. It's just a locking mechanism. Okay, so the second connection we're gonna take loose, take your needle nose, put on that gray tab and work it up. Just like that. Same principle, it's just like a locking ring. All right, so we're gonna pull that up. But we can't really take anything loose right now because this is still connected. And I'm just realizing we're gonna have to take the power steering box loose. Now don't get uh, intimidated and thinking, oh Lord, I don't wanna take a bunch of stuff loose. There is the bolt that holds this down and it's on the side down here and we got to remove that okay so guys i don't know if you can see this but what's holding these tubes down here is a bolt way down in there see it right there see right back down in there so we've got to get that bolt out and you can't get the bolt out with the power steering reservoir right here so we got to remove it and just slide it over so I've already taken this loose. There'll be three bolts that hold this unit on. Two, careful not to drop them down in the engine. And we've got to take this one loose. So there'll be three bolts holding this housing on this reservoir. So we gotta remove the power steering, slide it over to gain access to those bolts. All right, get that one out. Set that one up there. This unit should move over. And now we can gain access to that bolt right there. And that just is a mounting bolt to hold these and stabilize these tubes right here. An eight millimeter will fit on there just like that. So you don't, you can use, it's a lot easier with an eight millimeter open end wrench to reach in behind there and gain access to that. Let's see if I can get in there. Okay, so I did find out real quick. I had to shine a light down in here to see where the mounting bracket is on this. All right, it's not this first one. It's right here. So you take that one loose, it won't do anything. So want to remove this one, which is behind the bolt for the reservoir. So it's right there. So we're gonna remove that one with the eight millimeter open end wrench. This one's pretty long. As you can see, that's why you gotta take the reservoir off. All right, let's set it out of the way. All 
All right, so remove these. Not sure if it's a screw or a bolt. I think it's, it's a bolt with a T, a Torx bit. Yeah, bolt with a Torx 25, T25. And you've got two of them that hold this top clamp down. All right, now we gotta work on the bottom one down here. So it's just a lot of little clamps, small bolts, things like that. It's just tedious, it's not hard guys. All right, I've got my light down here so you can see I've removed this, this bolt here, T25. You look down here for the second one and it's just a squeeze clamp that we will squeeze with the pliers and release possibly some long needle nose to get down down in that section that way over this dipstick so some long needle nose will come in handy all right in case you guys are wondering there's the part number right in front of us also see that mounting bolt right there that's the second one towards the back that has to come out so not only do we remove the band clamp right back there, we've got to remove that T, no, that's not a T, that's a uh, eight millimeter. I use a deep well just to remove that. That's just mounting that holds the tubes. And uh, you can see it leaking already. That's just from where I pulled the car around. So there's your leak right there on the bottom tube to reach this one not only the deep well am i using i went ahead and got a small extension still a quarter inch socket ratchet and you can reach your hand back here and get that out all right got it loose it is like i said it's not hard it's just a little bit of finagling and now that i've got it loose be prepared the coolant is spilling out there running down i've got to clean that up but let me point out stuff you couldn't see before um okay connections right here 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 was the one right there Let's see, um, yeah, just get a good look where um, you can see down in there now. And I'm gonna be honest, all right, uh, you can see right here where that connects, that connects down in the back, and that's just a squeeze clamp. Okay, so we have the old unit out. How did I get it out? Because you're, you're wrestling with it right now back and forth, I know you are. Okay, I found it so much easier, so much easier to just take a small, small saw and just, it's, it's busted anyhow, guys. So I cut it in a couple places that were easily accessible under the engine with this right here, just a little saw um, that cuts PVC and it's, it's very soft. So it just went through it almost like butter. So um, I had to just cut it up to make it easier to get out. Um, just you're working in a tight space and um, you know, if you got a Dremel tool, chop it up and that way you can, you can work from the back and pull this out. Then you can work from the front, and pull this out. So I made my cut somewhere right about in the middle and uh, didn't show that on the video. I was uh, a little busy at the moment and forgot to hit record. So you guys get the, get the picture though. So, but I mean, honestly, it's not that hard. All right, so just to show you guys, back down in here, getting that uh, band clamp on and off, you're gonna need these, okay? I went and bought these at the, uh, auto parts store i'll put a link in the description for these i was using these but it is almost impossible you need the specialty pliers that hold the rings 
So you got the back bottom one connected. And when you're putting it, all this back together, you want to work from the bottom back to the top, meaning you don't want to put this back on without this hose connected. It's just a lot easier to get that bottom connection first. And then I would work forward. All right, I know what you're gonna ask about this. And that is a factory band. So when you take this off, take it in the shop, put it on a bench vise or whatever, pliers, you squeeze it and then just pop it off. Took a um, flathead screwdriver, I broke the old pipe out of it and I just slid it up on this and we're gonna take a uh, factory, I mean, not a factory, but a uh, hose clamp, which I've got a whole bunch right here in this uh, container. We'll, uh, we'll get one like this or something to go around that. All right, so the only thing you're gonna have left to put back are these hoses like this. Push that down, lock it back. Okay, so I've got all my connections back. That's probably the toughest one of them all down here. And if you have to, take that bolt loose off of the dipstick and kind of bend that dipstick over a little bit just so you can get your hands down in there. And you put your bolts back. Everything went right back. I have not put a clamp on here yet because this does not flow coolant. This is just air. And we're gonna see if that makes a difference leaving that off because it fits snug. So I don't think that that will affect anything, but if it does, we'll put a band clamp on it. But uh, all of this is back. Everything is uh, connected. So we're going to check for leaks now. We're going to start it up and let it run. Everything looks solid. Awesome. Now at this time, that's what I spilled on the manifold. It's gonna burn off. And this right here is what we use. Like I said, check out my other video. But we're gonna we're low on the coolant now because we spilled some, and I'm gonna replenish that. Right back on there, and it should pop. There we go. 